today on Rappler. Davao Mayor Rudy Duterte reveals more bank certificates. The New People's Army releases the four remaining prisoners of war. And North Korean media hails Kim Jong-un as the great son of the 21st century. Hello and welcome. I'm Maria Ressa. We come to you live from the Rappler News Center. This is your 8 p.m. update for the run-up to the 2016 Philippine elections. Davao City Mayor Rudy Duterte presents bank certificates Wednesday that show his controversial account had less than 18,000 pesos. This after Senator Antonio Trillanes accused Duterte of not declaring more than 200 million pesos worth of transactions in this Bank of the Philippine Islands account in 2014. All in all, Trillanes alleges Duterte's unexplained wealth amounts to 2.4 billion pesos. The rest were supposedly contained in two other accounts in BPI Green Hills and Banco de Oro in Davao City. According to a BPI bank certificate, Duterte had 17,816.98 centavos in his BPI Julia Vargas account on March 31, 2014. The date is two days after Duterte's birthday when large, deposits, when large deposits were allegedly made. Asked why he didn't ask for a balance certification for March 28, the date of the alleged deposits, Duterte said the bank didn't want to certify something non-existent. Duterte also shows balance certificates of another BPI dollar account in his name from three different time periods, December 31, 2013 to March 31, 2014, April 1 to 30, 2016, and March 31, 2014. All three show a balance of just over 5,000 U.S. dollars. Duterte says if these large transactions were made in his account, why did the central bank and AMLAC not raise the alarm? and the AMLAC. Sponsati ni Trillanes na 2.4 sabi ni Matagano then why the hell wala akong nalaman o pinaalam ako ng AMLAC kaya yung istibar na the New People's Army, or the NPA, released the four remaining prisoners of war. This pushed through despite the capture Monday of a top-ranking NPA official, Ricardo Manili, also known as Ka Joker. Before the release of the four, the NPA released the first captive to presidential candidate Rodrigo Duterte late April, which came after talks with exiled communist leader Joe Maris, Jose Maria Sison. Duterte and Sison agreed to observe a ceasefire between government and the NPA, the communist NPA, if Duterte is elected as president. In other news, North Korean state media hails Kim Jong-un as, quote, the great son of the 21st century. Final preparations for his formal coronation are underway, the first of its kind for nearly 40 years. He took over four years ago after the death of his father, Kim Jong-il. The Rodon Sinmon Daily calls the Congress a sacred event to highlight his achievements from infrastructure projects to submarine-launched ballistic missiles. Rodon calls the weapons, quote, a treasure of all happiness that will ensure many things in decades to come. Here's a quick rundown of tonight's 7 p.m. news. Despite controversies, Davao City Mayor Rudy Duterte still enjoys an 11-point lead over the next candidate for president in the latest survey. While administration bet Lenny Robredo overtakes Senator Bongbong Marcos in the vice presidential race. President Benigno Aquino urges voters not to be swayed by Rudy Duterte. In Bataan, a congressional candidate is poised to become the first transgender lawmaker in the Philippines. And Singaporean officials arrest eight Bangladeshi men for an alleged terror plot. To, to watch more, click on the link on this video. That's the top of the hour update. Earlier this afternoon, I spoke with Vice Presidential Candidate Sonny Trillanes, whose charges about the unexplained wealth, whose charges about unexplained wealth against frontrunner Rudy Duterte has created headlines a week before voting day. Here's what Trillanes had to say. 
Hello and welcome. This is Rappler Talk. I'm Maria Ressa. We're sitting with Senator Sonny Trillanes to talk about this, the probe into an alleged multi-million peso bank account of presidential frontrunner Rudy Duterte. Trillanes says Duterte did not declare this money in his statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth, or SALN. He supposedly kept about 227 million pesos in the Bank of the Philippine Islands, or BPI, account. Sitting with us today is Sani Tulianes. Thank you so much for joining us, Senator Tulianes. Good afternoon, uh, Ms. Maria. So tell me exactly, what did you find? Okay, uh, let me just correct your initial uh, statements. It's not uh, hundreds of millions, it's billions of pesos. So we found at least 2.4 billion pesos under the name of uh, Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. And this is a joint account with uh, his daughter, Sara, and uh, these are accounts in BPI Julia Vargas and Green Hills. How did you find these? This was given to me um, by an informant. Uh, his name is uh, Mr. Joseph De Mesa, or at least that's how, uh, that's the name he gave to me. And uh, before we actually met, he found a line to our group, the Magdalos, and um, I uh, had uh, somebody vet him first. And then uh, when he was cleared to be legit, so they set up a meeting right away with me, so I met with him. He claims to be a relative of um, an official who belongs to an agency that's investigating um, any public officials. So. That's his claim, and he came in with a set of documents. So when he was cleared by the initial meeting by uh, our companion, I, um, I focused on the documents. Okay. So we looked at the documents and had my uh, sources uh, validate uh, the veracity of the, doc the information mm -hmm. stored in the documents. And then uh, when everything checked out, I gave it to the inquirer okay. who did their own uh, checking and validation and it got out describe to me exactly what you found how did he where is this where are these billions of pesos how did they get them and and what has happened to them now it's a series of uh, deposits um, obviously or i would conclude coming from a a bigger account of unknown account holder so we saw at least 700 million pesos of deposits or credits from uh, this mother account. So these are interbranch transfers. And then there are also over-the-counter deposits and other forms of uh, credit memos. So the total of all these uh, credit transactions would amount to 2.4 billion 2 pesos. 2.4 billion pesos. And, and in terms of how this money, do you have an idea how this money came? Into these uh, we're looking into at least two leads. Um, right now, uh, my lawyers are preparing um, a case to be filed in relation to anti violation of the Anti Graft and Corruption and Practices Act. So that's one. And the other is uh, we are still pursuing, but uh, apparently, Mayor Duterte has links also in the illegal drug trade in Davao City illegal drug trade and how long has have these billions of pesos been there i mean were you able to get gauge a time from when it began to mm -hmm. is it still going on now from 2006 to 2015 so that's why what we've been asking for in the interest of truth mm -hmm. and transparency is the transaction history of uh, these accounts and um mayor duterte for all his uh, bravado, suddenly became tongue-tied when faced with this issue. And he's been calling me names, but still, he didn't show up last Monday. I challenged him to prove me wrong. And if I'm wrong with the information I gave, then I would automatically resign from the Senate and uh, lose my face. Um, I won't be able to face anyone anymore. Um, I believe that's uh, how sure I am with the accuracy and truthfulness of uh, my information. In terms of his reaction, he, he claimed that in seven days, uh, uh, at least from the time when you guys mm -hmm. had the challenge, let's call it the BPI challenge, mm -hmm. um, when you had that, that in seven days his the bank would release his records. Are you surprised by that? 
Well, um, it's it's a um, smoke screen. It's a diversion. They're just stalling time. He could have easily um, showed up and show uh, and uh, show to the whole world that uh, his hands are clean. That he's uh, not hiding anything. That uh, he is transparent. He is honest. But he missed it. That's that's what people should uh, uh, should take away from that incident. Um, this lawyer, he said, this lawyer who is deceptive right from the, the very start, he didn't even give a copy of the SPA to the media, right? He just showed the last page of uh, the SPA and had it photographed. But even in that, you can see that they only requested for uh, one account account balance for one account and a certification that uh, the this account didn't have any balance uh, exceeding 211 million and if there um, if bpi now would find out that the this account had uh, balances exceeding 211 million then it wouldn't give a certification right Plus, the waiver that uh, that was attached to this SPA, it's a pro, por pro forma waiver of the BPI, is for the bank officials of BPI to release information requested in the SPA to the lawyer, not to the public. Yes. So there's a difference. What we've been asking for is a waiver so that the public can scrutinize uh, th this account. But what they showed is an SPA requesting for specific uh, uh, information uh, in those accounts to be released only to the lawyer. And when I asked the lawyer, will you release it to me? He said he won't because he will have to report it to his client, which is Mayor Duterte. So th there's a play with words here. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, he didn't show up. Yep. I gave him a challenge. Uh, it's very important right now in this face of the campaign that uh, we're looking for an honest leader first and foremost. We're looking for uh, an, a leader who's not corrupt. Mm -hmm. And he fashions himself as, a, as such. So this was important in the decision making of our voters. In, when we were talking about this just before the cameras came on, I mean, mm -hmm. you see this as opening Pandora's box. Yes. And so what's the picture of Rudy Duterte that you see after you've gone through these documents? Um, it's. Everything was just a lie. Everything was uh, purely propaganda. His campaign is a lie. He is a fraud. He is as corrupt as uh, the be nice. In fact, I believe, based on what uh, I've been seeing, he is actually the be nice of Davao City. Um, I would have to admit that prior to this, he was never known to be widely corrupt. corrupt yes, right. and just like uh, the be nice also, uh, I didn't uh, believe he was that corrupt until I saw. Uh, the evidence myself. Now, in this particular case, um, we can see a pattern. Uh, both of them are political dynasties and they're, they've been entrenched in uh, these cities for decades and uh, they control the city councils. That's why they can do whatever they want. Um, mm. A survey released today by ABS-CBN shows Rudy Duterte significantly ahead by at least 10 percentage points. Are you surprised by this? No, uh, because uh, the people bought the lie. They bought the propaganda. Uh, if you would trace now back to when he uh, first floated the, the name, you, you can see that uh, they were following a script. They initially released the results of this uh, bogus uh, survey of the safest city in the world, uh, which apparently when uh, we researched, there are only 400 plus respondents, mm -hmm. most of them coming from uh, their trolls. So they were able to jack up Davao City to number nine, then had it released in the local media and uh, sponsored in social media. So there was um, a subconscious uh, inception of uh, this this uh, fake report that was crowdsourcing we actually looked at that and yes, yes. that's correct it yes. wasn't uh, so legitimate. they gave the perception that indeed davao city was the safest city one of the safest cities in the world but when we looked at the legitimate uh, list of safest cities in the world 
Davao City is nowhere to be found, even in the, in the top 1,000 safest city. So it was based on that lie. And then after that, when they have injected that input, they started um, creating this clamor for Duterte to run. Remember, he initially was uh, uh, hesitant. He was the reluctant candidate to the point that he allowed the filing period to pass without filing yes. the, that uh, his candidacy so that he's uh, what's the call what's the term now uh, nagpapasabik sa mga uh, Filipinos and we, we love that the, the mm -hmm. teleserie mm -hmm. moments like that so not knowing the public not knowing that he really had the plan and it, they were just following a script until eventually he came up with this flimsy excuse for running that he can't afford to have uh, an American, uh, former American citizen, uh, being a president of the country. It's one of the flimsiest excuses to run ever, but people glossed, uh, uh, glossed over that. What's in it for you, Sonny? I mean, there are tons of conspiracy theories that, yeah. all, all that are about. What's in it for you? Why are you doing this? Um, the, the, well, this is my job. Uh, you know, Maria, where I started. Um, this is not new to me. Um, I, if, if, if it were up to me, I'd avoid big battles like this. I'm, I'm risking my, my life in this uh, thing. Um, but apparently, this is where uh, fate uh, always lead me to. So I'm just up for it. And no one, no one supporting you, no one backing okay. you? Th those are the same questions uh, they, they ask every time. Mm -hmm. I come up with a face big uh, political monsters. Yes. They asked that uh, during uh, Oakwood, they asked that when I faced the generals, then uh, Binay, then Entrile, then now um, Duterte. But every time, there's nobody behind me. It's just me and my group, uh, the Magdalos. We're just being consistent. But in Oakwood, for example, there were politicians who had backed the Magdalo group. Yes. We saw the sacks of rice there. We yes, were together but then. Uh, they had a different plan. But yes. the Oakwood was ours. Yes. No, That's you were an idealist. Yes. I, mm -hmm. um, so let, let's go back to here. What do you expect to happen? I mean, the bank account won't... This information will be out after Election Day, is that yes. correct? Yes, yes. Um, and you, what I hear you saying is that this is actually planned that way. Yeah. What do you think um, will happen? What will happen if Duterte wins? Um, if the 30 wins and the truth will come out, de definitely it will come out um, in a couple of weeks, then I'll show to the people, now you have been shortchanged. Now what will the people do when they see and feel that they have been shortchanged? I leave, will leave it up to them. So, uh, like I said yesterday in a, a press conference that um, Filipinos have found creative ways of dealing with such situations, so um, I'll have to wait and see. Remember, even if um, he wins and um, we'll know the results, I think around mid-May, he will only take his oath June on June 30. 30. So right. there's that period of time wherein people can uh, do what we, they need to do. In the meantime, what will you do? from now on until um, you're convinced that this is Pandora's box. Definitely. Uh, what, that's, do you, what do you want to happen then? Um, I want the, the people to open their eyes. Um, they believed me when I investigated and I showed the evidence against Be Nice. But since it's not convenient for them to, to believe me anymore, uh, they, they're trying to justify the actions uh, and this information of uh, uh, regarding uh, Duterte. So there's some intellectual dishonesty going or going on around the Duterte supporters. But we're looking at the moderates, those who have really no basis to to vote for uh, Duterte. That uh, they were just uh, they just rode the wave, so to speak. So we're still. Uh, hoping that uh, they will change their minds. Fantastic. Sonny, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. coming with us. We've been speaking with Senator Sonny Trillanes about this billions of pesos uh, allegedly siphoned into the accounts of presidential candidate Rudy Duterte. He is the front runner, up by about 10 percentage points in the latest survey. 
We're going to go back for more soon. I'm Maria Ressa. Keep, stay tuned to Rappler. We'll be back. Thank you. We're going to go get the other side of it.